until you come through repentance. That's what the scriptures teach. Not this nonsense that it's been done for you, that he justifies the ungodly, that it's all a done deal. He already reconciled the world. There's no past, present, and future forgiveness. His past sins are remitted in salvation. That's the free gift. The free gift is past sins remitted. We see in Romans chapter 5. We see the gift of eternal life as though yet to be reaped in the age to come. See the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. And then you've got the promise of the magic cover that supposedly takes, takes place and you get this magic transfer. Nobody ever actually stops sinning though because even, even the replacement nature is not really you can stop sinning. It's just a desire to stop sinning, they, always, they say. That's what they've told me. Well, you don't stop sinning. It's just a desire to stop. Well, that, is that all you get in the divine nature that Peter talked about in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4? Where he says, we exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you might escape to corruption in the world through lust, being partakers of the divine nature. That's all just a desire to stop sin. That ain't what it sounds like Peter's talking about. He's talking about you diligently then strive to add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, and on through there. If you do these things, you're not going to be brought into the air of the wicked, stumble and fall out of, these, out of the path of righteousness. You make your calling sure. If you want to enter the kingdom. That's the like precious faith that he's talking about in that epistle. That's the common truth that was taught among the early saints. The faith once delivered to the saints. That's no longer the prevalent in the land. Where we have a famine of the word of God. We've got a lot of preaching going on. But we got a famine of the word of God for sure. And that's why we got this mess on our hands in America. And all these phony blony Christians judge not running around professing to be Christians and holding the banner up against homosexuality and same-sex marriage and, and abortion and all that, but yet they're living in filthy rags and wretched man condition and covering it up with the I'm not perfect can excuse. It's an abomination unto God, folks. Total abomination unto God. There's no mysterious sin nature that dwells in your flesh. you got to get that out of your head entirely. Are you rip and strip man of his ability to come clean with God? So who teaches these things? Well, who teaches these things? Well, you could probably do another hour video just naming the guys. John MacArthur, John Piper, John Ankerberg, Arwin Lucer, Paul Washer, Ed Young, Francis Chan, Mark Driscoll, Augustine, Luther, Wesley, Finney, Calvin, Moody, Booth, all those guys from the path, Ken Hovind, Jeb Smock, Ray Comfort, Kurt Cobine, D.D. Jakes, Tex Mars, Chuck Baldwin, Ted Cruz, John Hagee, Joel Olstein, Rick Warren, Pat Robertson, and all the cohorts that go along with that, Chuck Smith, Billy Graham, Mark Cahill, Zach Poonin, TBN, CBN, IHOP, God Channel, Promise Keepers, Street Evangelists, and Pastors, and Theologians, and Bible Colleges, the blogs, and the channels, and the websites by the millions, the Pentecostal Charismatic, Prosperity, Word of Faith movement all over the place. The Hebrew Roots people, they teach this stuff too. And all these professed Christian patriots out here that think the end of time has come and they're going to get raptured out. Or they're going to go through some tribulation and the Antichrist is coming and they're, they're going to do a market of beasts is going to get them. All these people that I just named, and thousands more, are false teachers and liars. They're not your brothers and sisters. There's not some good in them. If that were true, we'd have to say there's some good in Satan because he quoted the scriptures too. They twist the truth. Even philosophers of old weren't entirely wrong in everything they said. There was always snippets of truth in some of the things they said. Same with these teachers. They mix truth with error and come up with a form of godliness denying the power, meaning the power to live a godly life. The power to release people from the bondage of sin. Ever learning, never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's where these people are. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that a real Christian doesn't walk in filthy rags, in wretched man, sinning every day in thought, word, and deed, and nobody's perfect and all the rest of that, but walks in victory over sin, the flesh, and the devil through faith working by love and purifying his heart from sin. 
That's what makes them liars and not our brothers and sisters. And that's where you need the discerning sharpness in your walk so you don't become partakers of sin with them. Just like John said, and we'll, we'll end with this in the second epistle of John. If anybody brings this doctrine where he says, he says, many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh, and this is the Antichrist. Look to yourself that you do not lose those things you work for, that you may receive a full reward. The war, reward is eternal life, folks. There's not many rewards or crowns. The reward is eternal life. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in his doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So if anybody comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house or greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. What is the doctrine? Just te- Doctrine just means teaching. The doctrine in accordance with godliness and self-control. Anything that doesn't promote godliness and self-control, put it to death the old man in, in, in repentance, living clean in Christ, that's not of God. He's bringing a different doctrine. It's got to die out over time. you got filthy rags. Your flesh is corrupt. Nobody's perfect. All those things are against the doctrine he's talking about here. The doctrine in accord with godliness. The woholesome words of Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 6.3 talks about it. Where he says, if you abide and you teach these things, you live these things, they'll save both yourself and those who hear you. He told Timothy, well, I say the same thing to you. To sharpen your discernment in these things. You dig deep, deeper than you ever have before in your life. And put forth every effort that you have within you to strive to enter through that narrow gate. And remain on that road to eternal life and be not deceived.